Yeah! I've never made money off record sales anyway. Very few of my friends have made money off record sales, you know, but now with the state of everything, it's even harder to make money off record sales. Um, so I don't really know what's going to happen, but um, I am thankful that I, I have a good touring fan base and I want to keep doing that kind of thing. And just trying to, it's important for me to like keep giving my fans a reason to, to buy concert tickets and t-shirts and stuff like that, you know, trying to make the concerts more of an event and, you know, something real. So do you think the answer then is just a better product? Well, um, what do you mean? Like, do, you, do you as an artist feel like, like you said, you never really made money off record sales, so you try really hard to make your shows and your touring and things like that special for the fans so they have a reason to come out. Totally. Is that something you would you would say the record industry as a whole needs to embrace? Well, um, I think that... One thing, I don't know what the record industry needs to embrace, and that's why I don't sit behind a desk, because I don't know what they should do. But I do believe if you're going to make an album, like recording music is still my other favorite thing to do. I mean, it's equal to putting on concerts. Um, I don't like one more than the other. Um, so it is important to me to make albums. And, you know, I believe, like, if... The very few people that are going to buy a CD, I think you should, for them, you should give them a nice package and, and something really nice to buy. And, um, you know, good artwork and packaging. And the, the material should obviously be high quality and the recordings should be good. Um, a lot of record companies are still trying to cut corners. They see it as the opposite philosophy. If, you know, very few people are buying records, why should we even make records? Let's just put it on iTunes and be done. And you know, and if we make a CD, let's just use the cheapest packaging possible. But mm -hmm. I don't believe in that because I believe everything that I want to be associated with needs to be really good quality and something special. How do you survive in the changing industry? Because when you started, when you put out your first record, when you started with your first solo venture, the record industry was very different. And yeah. do you feel like you've had to adapt, or is it just that the, what you've been doing has stayed the same and now is a more commercially viable thing? Um, I've had to adapt. Um, you know, one thing that's a little sad to me is, you know, growing up as a kid, my dream was to have a gold record. You know, in those days now, like in the 90s, it was actually kind of attainable. And when Sha Sha came out in 2002, it still was a total possibility that I might be able to have a gold record one day, but now that record sales have decreased 20 to 30 percent every year since 2002, it's 200,000 copies is now like the new gold record. And so things like that have totally changed, and I've had to readapt my mind to, to those um, sort of benchmarks, I guess, where like now instead of, instead of doing... Um, 500,000 records sold, it's now like, you know, 500,000 friends on MySpace, you know. Yeah! What do you think about MySpace in general and just how that's changed the music industry and how it's... I think it's been really cool. Uh, I've always been very techy and into gadgets and, and um, very much into technology. Um, and the web, obviously. I think that it's cool because it's really leveled the playing field a lot for unknown bands, um, people that don't have record deals or any way to get to a record company. Um, I think it, it, it allows these young bands to build a fan base on their own. and It allows you to be really independent, but at the same time, you have to sift through a lot of shitty music too to find the good stuff, you know, because every, anyone can have, can be a band. Anyone's always been able to be a band, but it just seemed like, you know, like one thing that's a little hard right now 
is that in the 60s I feel like you would become popular for being good at something um, like Jimi Hendrix was popular just because he was completely talented and really great at what he did you know and nowadays you don't really have to be talented or really know how to make music to be popular you know and it just depends on how much money is behind you or who you schmooze with or like who, what people you know it's really kind of sad you know and that's how radio has been for the past 10 years um, so it's a little it, it's hard for people like me I think that are trying to like make real honest music you know and other bands like Wilco or Bright Eyes or whoever Kings of Leon um, and you just we just got to keep doing what we do but um, I don't know I guess it's just that's where where we're at and you know I've just basically in the past few years I've started to just completely forget about radio or MTV or the possibilities of being on those because I just feel like you know it's such a corporate thing and it's almost like people pay to be on those outlets you know so it's I don't know so grassroots marketing I guess is just sort of where where I live yeah!